I was right. It did take some getting used to, but man, once you do get used to it, what a mighty eing tablet this is. And I must say that everything that I needed to know was right there in the user manual. No surprises there. <laughs> but the first thing that you ought to know about any books device really is that they are going to give you a steeper learning curve and you do have to be prepared to go through and read and learn all the features. And in several of my reviews so far, I've said that this is the one that you should buy if you don't mind getting to know settings, playing about with things to kind of customize this device to be what you want it to be. If you are willing to take the time to customize it, then it will reward you and it can do more. It does have more opportunities than any other of the e-ink tablets. So basically don't expect this to be an intuitive device that you can just use straight out of the box. You're gonna have to get used to where to find all of the different things that you want from this device. For a device to do more, it simply has to be more complex. And if you're gonna buy this over one of the other options, one of the other great e-ink tablet options that are out there, is going to be because you prize the ability to do more over the ability to do stuff easily. This is my full review of the Books No Air 2. It's a fantastic device. It's definitely in my top five, and it's really been difficult to pick where this sits. I hope I've done a good job anyway in my comparison videos of actually showing you why you should buy a certain e-ink tablet over another. And this is the type of one that you'll buy if you're interested in technology, if you're happy to take the time to get to know settings, and if you're interested in customizability. Simply put, if you're an Android user and you like to customize your devices, then this is a great option for you. But if you're an Apple user and you just want it to work straight out of the box without any kind of questions, then maybe go for one of the other ones. Shots fired at Apple users, I suppose. This is the Note Air 2. And books seem really committed to producing these annual iterative designs. So this is almost exactly the same package as the Note Air 1, but just with a bit of a spec upgrade. I did a comparison recently between it, the Super Note A5X, and the Remarkable 2, and it came joint first with the Super Note. It's hard to look past its features. However, in a recent top five e-ink tablets, I put the Remarkable above it, and that shows you how subjective design choices can be. It suffices to say that it's well worth a position in the top e-ink tablets that are out there. And if you want something that's this size and can do more, this might be the one for you. It's a great all-rounder, and make sure you subscribe and you put notifications on if you don't want to miss any of my comparisons. I've got more devices coming in, and as they come out, I love to make those comparison videos for you. I have been using this for several weeks now as my daily ink driver for work. I do believe that they're excellent tools for professionals. And so this is based on my experience of actually using it for work. The videos I'm making on my channel about e-ink tablets are about letting you get the most out of tech for professionals. One thing I would say is that the main notepad app is really, really good. And I love the feature, for instance, that you can actually make audio notes and you can play them back. Here, they just sort of sit saved within the notepad for you to play back through the speakers on the device. I've probably got the sound off, so you won't be able to hear that right now. There are loads of different functions, and this isn't all. <laughs> and you've got, for instance, text recognition, and it can recognize the text in place, or it can go ahead and recognize the text and put it into lines, reflow, they call that. There's loads of different things isn't always the most accurate of the text recognitions, however. Now you can edit within that. I don't know if you noticed that, that was the Gboard, because you can actually choose your own keyboard on this, and I love on Android using the Google keyboard. You can add text boxes, you can lasso, you can draw lines. This is about canvas size, you can change the canvas size here. This is your layer navigator, this is your page navigator. You have loads and loads and loads of different choice when it comes to pens and you can keep your own customized set of pens at the top here as well and disable it with finger touch which is quite useful actually add pages search within the document that is your undo button there's so many more options here that i haven't even shown you yet that you can actually have as part of your sidebar if you wish. You can customize the, the toolbar. It also has this feature here, which is the little navigation ball, which lets you get to a quick set of menus, which I really like the quick access to an undo button. And you can customize what buttons and functions you have on that quick access navigation ball. The other thing, of course, because it's a books tablet, is really closely linked into the library and the reader. So you also have a really good reading app in here as well. And you can annotate everywhere in that reading app. It's an excellent e-reader and note taker. And if you're looking for one device, 
for all your reading and note taking needs and this might be the one for you largely because it does have the backlight which I think is essential if you're looking for a device that can be a reader as well as a note taker. Most people don't note take in the dark so you don't necessarily need a backlight but for readers most people do at some point in their time actually read at night and so that backlight is useful. And let's not forget that you can play games on here that you can download any app you want. For instance, you could have a chess app. <laughs> Let's not forget, playing chess on the e-reader, that's, that's the dream really, isn't it? <laughs> and because of the vast and varied capability of the device, you'll find loads of customization as well. The interesting thing is I don't think your experience of this device will be much like my experience of this device because you'll learn to use it in a different way. For example, I was using this to draw initially and I didn't like the fact that every single time you sort of moved the canvas around, it did this rendering thing, but you can turn that off if you want. So usually if you find something that you're not so keen on about the device, is this rendering thing here, you can actually adapt that and customize that to make that your, your own. The drawing is really good on it. One thing I'd say that it would need is a kind of global handwriting input like Scribble on the iPad. I think that can make it a really strong device. One thing to think about is that it does feel more like a Android tablet than most of the other e-ink tablets which are going for a kind of notepad feel. That's because it is this kind of cold metallic feel. You might not like that, but that could easily be solved with a good case, of course. Typing on the normal keyboard is a bit of a pain, but of course I've changed that straight away to be the Google keyboard. allows you to do the swipe like this and therefore you can type in that bit faster. You can also of course use a Bluetooth keyboard and that does work really well on the books. They do have a Bluetooth keyboard case that can work with it but that was really designed for the older Note devices and they're looking at bringing out something because this would make an excellent e-ink laptop. It could be a really good like e-ink typewriter and those are really compelling devices. I mean a low profile mechanical keyboard with this would be ideal. I will just say something else about the screen is it does appear to have more ghosting effects than many other ink tablets that I've used. And I don't know why that is particularly, it's not particularly showing it right here. You do have the ability to customize the screen. If you go into the e-ink center and you can customize, as I say, you can customize everything on this device. You can customize how often it refreshes, things like the contrast and the speed modes but basically how fast it's trying to balance between refreshing the screen and giving you that nice clean whites and blacks. It might well be because I'm seeing that more often in the non-Android customized apps you can see there. Um, so things like the Chrome app is not customized for, for the books device itself and therefore you're getting that ghosting. You can in here customize each app so how many operations it will perform before it refreshes, you could bring that down. There's loads of options there. One thing you can have is just have this button handy and there you are, you can do a full refresh whenever that annoys you. The drawing is good, the range of tools is good, I really enjoy it. The pen feel is good, I have really enjoyed drawing on this tablet. I think as I was saying, this is a device that can go and do everything well. This is the jack of all trades device really. If you just want one device to take over a lot of different functions in your life, this might well be the one for you. The nice thing about the Books platform is once you're signed in, it will automatically update all your notes across all Books devices. So you can actually have one of the smaller ones or the larger ones and use them simultaneously interchangeably. Depending on what your day holds, if you want to take the tiny one or the big one, you still have access to all your notes in the Books cloud. That's pretty cool. But how many of you are really looking to buy more than one e-ink tablet? I think if I was them, I would be looking to maybe divorce the two apps and actually have a notes app and a drawings app because it is a really good possibility on this to get a really excellent drawing feel. And also in future devices, they could introduce the tilt function to allow them to access more of what the Wacom styluses can do. So that's my suggestion, have a separate drawing app. But drawing is good. The split screen mode is great as well. I think that's actually excellent. You can split either horizontally or vertically. So that's a really useful functionality. You can have on this side a totally different app, but not everything supports split screen mode. You also can't have two notes, notebooks side by side, which is weird. It does have auto rotate, which can actually be a little bit annoying at times because it sometimes does it when you don't want to. But again, if you find that annoying, you can turn it off. And I think it's better that it's there because some people will love to have that and find it annoying not to have that. 
and other people will prefer just to get used to using it one way around. I also had a bit of a heart stopping moment where I actually thought I'd lost all of my notes and I hadn't lost all my notes at all. What had happened is that it had forgotten that it was logged in as me and all I had to do was put in my login credentials and they all appeared again. I found that on uh, forum, other people have had the same experience. It was just a case of signing back in and all my notes came back, they weren't lost at all. So nothing to worry about on that score. But that type of experience can have a bit of a bad effect on you and you don't wanna feel that you can't trust a device with your important notes. And what some of these things do is they add up to you having to actually think about using the device rather than just using the device to help you think. So I really think that you should weigh that up. If you want to be involved with, with your device, then this is a good thing for you. But if you want a device that is just gonna be as easy to use as a notepad, have a look elsewhere. If you prize the capability and you don't mind dealing with some of those technical aspects, great device. If you prize actually just being able to use it without worrying about it and trusting that it'll work all the time, then maybe go with one of the other ones. In other words, ask yourself whether you really want another fully capable device, or whether you already got enough of those in your life. Or if you're really looking for something that just kind of gets out of your way, the tech recedes into the background and leaves you free to think. Because it can do more, you will want to do more with it. And that can actually be a bit obstructive. Almost the first thing you're likely to do is to go ahead and download the Google Play Store, which again, isn't the easiest thing in the world to manage. And then you're gonna think, wow, what apps can I download onto it? And you'll get the games app and things like that. <laughs> and you'll probably, like me, get chess. And then it become a really expensive chess machine, whereas you probably can already just play chess on your phone quite happily. So if you've been sold the e-ink tablet experience by Remarkable of it being this kind of elegant productivity tool for your meetings, then maybe this isn't the device for you. Do you just want something to replace your diary? Or do you really want to make sure that you can actually go in and use a full Gmail app and use whatever calendar app you want and use your Microsoft apps, access Trello for your scripts on the actual e-ink device? If you do, if you want an Android e-ink tablet, this is the choice for you. And if you want to spend less time staring at LCD screens, less time staring at your phone, and know that the e-ink screen is the thing that you really want, then this is certainly going to be an excellent choice for you. Some of my videos coming up soon. The Books Note Air 2 can do so much with very few compromises.